So, first of all, what is an anthro character? Well, anthro is Greek for human. Actually, anthropo is Greek for human, but English has an addiction to two-syllable words, which is how we got the Greek for a man, meaning somewhere between a man and a woman. So it's just a human character? Easy. I know, like, five or six of those. But anthropo is also short for anthropomorphic, or human-shaped, which sounds like exactly the same thing. But believe it or not, anthropomorphic is also short... Well, it's, a, it's like a category. Usually, it's filled in with something that is not human-shaped, but in this context is being drawn as if it were human-shaped. Usually, that's an animal, although occasionally there are some mythical creatures, though those are usually lumped under monster girls, the etymology of which is easier to demystify. It is these which I will be ranking the accuracy of. So, how am I determining accuracy? Mostly through homology, a concept I will explain using linguistics to keep my view time up. This is a horn, pictured here on a goat. Horn is derived from the Proto-Indo-European word ter, the same root that gave us Greek keras and Latin cornu. They're from the same source, and they're all used to refer to antlers or horns, ultimately bony protrusions from the skull and even-toed ungulates. Now, let's look at a Polish word sarna. I know it's hard to believe, but this is actually also related, except it means cattle. Now, cows don't have horns, but they are even-toed ungulates. Even though it's not similar, it is related from the same origin. Homology can be used to refer to either of these boxes. But let's look at a different word, sirena, which actually does mean horn. Except, wait a minute, this isn't from the same source, this is actually a Greek loanword from the sirens, which is ultimately from twer. That became a police siren, and now it partially refers to a car's horn. Very nice. This is analogy. Even though they look similar and have a similar usage, these two words are not related. And then we have the Finnish word kiria hulu, which means bookshelf, which is not homologous or analogous, and also Finnish isn't an Indo-European language. So all that's left is to get a bunch of artwork to critique. Fortunately, it's Friday, so I can hop over to r slash loser city and sort by new. So a good place to start is probably with the wolf from Haluva Boss. Now, the human face is obviously very different from animals. We don't have a snout, we lack a lot of facial hair, and our ears are located closer to the brainstem than the top of the head. Most artists ignore these differences for the sake of avoiding the uncanny valley and just copy and paste an animal head onto a human body. That's completely fair, so no points lost. My biggest concern is the hair. Humans have very thin hair across the body, really only having thick hair on the head. As if it realizes how much it has to make up for, this hair can reach massive length, though a typical length is about 2 to 3 feet. This is very hard to justify evolutionarily, especially given how different hair is between black and white people. This leads to us uselessly speculating about the beauty standards of people who lived 8,000 years ago. Point being, it's a very recent evolution that no other species has, and it rarely makes sense to draw an animal character with human hair. That's why lions are the best furry. Despite that, I'm willing to grant Vivienne the hair length. What I can't grant is the hair color. Head and body hair can be different colors, although this is rare, but on her there's no clear division between head and body hair, unless she's bald! So it seems like the head hair is just a different hair. This is the same problem a lot of the heroes from Bloons Tower Defense face. Now, I haven't actually seen the show, so that could just be a wig and I'd have the egg on my face, but I need to make assumptions. Another thing that caught my attention immediately were her feet. No, 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 wait, wait a minute, shut up, not like that, shut up! The oversimplified leg skeleton is broken up into four segments by three joints, the thigh, calf, foot, and toes, and the knee, ankle, and the toe knuckles. The part that we walk on in humans is the foot and toes, hence the name plantigrade, and wolves walk only on their toes, hence the name digitigrade. There's also the ungulagrade, which breaks up the toes even further, but I did say oversimplified. The upshot being that wolves appear to have two knees, one of which bends inwards. In this photo, Luna appears to only have one knee that bends inwards. She does have knees, but why aren't the joints visible? I guess that issue is with the animation more than anything, so I will file it separately. In terms of accuracy, she's a 9 out of 10. You can only go so wrong in the mammals. From here, I would move on to birds, but Loser City provides us with a Lego, which is not the easiest to get a read on anatomically, and this guy, who's from the same show as the dog, and I don't want to retread. So here's the Twitter bird by at DSTiers Art. Overall, it's pretty accurate. She has feathers instead of hair and wings instead of arms. We can't see below the calf, but given the knee, I would assume her feet are just plantigrade. I'm fine with that, honestly. For the individual parts, I don't care if you use the human version or animal version. I'm just here to point out when you use both or neither. The eyes catch my attention, which makes sense because I am a human and my brain is hardwired to fixate on human faces. The Twitter logo is originally based on a mountain bluebird, but the character's eyes seem much more in line with a bird of prey in terms of size and the fact 
that they're front facing. I'm not an ornithologist, so I'm not going to break it down by species. A possible point of contention is the lack of feathers on her midriff and thighs, but I think it makes sense. Feathers and hair are homologous, they're both highly derived kinds of scales, and she has feathers in all the places you'd expect to see hair, arms, legs, and head. She has a lot more chest hair than you would expect to see from a woman, but I can imagine it would be harder for her to shave. Everything seems up to code, so I'm happy to give her a 10 out of 10. Let's move on to the closest living relative, Olivia from I Wanna Hug That Gator, which I'm now realizing is spelt with one N. Anyway, she's not technically an alligator. The whole crux of the show she's from, which is actually a video game, not a TV show, is that it's dinosaurs, so she's probably some sort of prehistoric crocodilian. So to determine her biological accuracy, we first need to know her species. By checking out the wiki, we can get a vague idea of what era... Okay. TV tropes. Surely you can have some sort of... I need to lie down. I shouldn't have made this video. A baryonyx. And it's called a gator in the title. Yeah, all right. Minus one point. Let's start with the hair. Minus two points. What do you want me to say? She's not a mammal. She's not even a bird that has feathers. Baryonyx had scales. Her hair should be scales. Now let's discuss the specifics. We don't know a lot about baryonyx, but most of what we've recovered is skulls. Baryonyx is thought to have a throat pouch because of the way the jaw closes. Other than that, we just don't know very much about them. But still, you manage to mess up most of it. 6 out of 10. While we're here, maybe some of the other characters can redeem the I'm going to have a stroke. This is Fang from a different game by the same developer, Snoot Game, and she is a pterodactyl. Now, it's worth noting that pterodactyl is not a thing. The genus is called Pterodactylus. But given the choice between confusing an alligator with a baryonyx... I'd gladly take a little misnomer. The biggest problem, aside from the fact that she, again, has hair, is the wings. Remember when I was glad the bird had wings instead of arms? Well, this one has wings and arms. That's six legs in total for anyone counting. Surely, she will be the first and only such character. To add insult to injury, her wings are covered in feathers, meaning she has all three vertebrate skin types. Now, if you Google, did pterosaurs have feathers, you will get a resounding yes, but don't think that changes anything. For one thing, the specimen referenced is two Pandactylus imperador, not pterodactylus. For another, the pycno fibers weren't stage 5 asymmetrical bird feathers, they were stage 3a at best. And finally, even if they had feathers, that doesn't mean they had a full body of feathers making up the wing. Pterosaurs had membrane wings, hence the no, that's someone else. Now, I've heard good things about the gameplay, but the character design is disappointing. I wanted to see cool designs, but instead I got biblically inaccurate angel with a pointy face. 4 out of 10, let's just skip over to the fish. Oh, I meant bony fish, but sure, we can do cartilaginous fish, drawn by at Ambrus Art. So, what's with the ears? That's not what human ears look like. That's not what shark ears look like. Whose ears are those? And I almost forgot, she has hair, again! Now you might be saying, oh, but Phoenix, why... Oh, that's my real name, I should change that. Oh, but Zinniop, if it's so common, why don't you just find a way through it? I refuse! What could be prompting the random switch from placoid scales to not just hair, but human hair at a random point on the scalp? Does she even have placoid scales? Either way, bad! And minus three points. While we're on the topic of placoid scales, there's another thing I need to address. Some people like to underplay how rough shark skin is because they think Tumblr memes from 2017 are still funny, and some other people like to overplay it because I don't care why. Point is, placoid scales that cover a shark's body are shaped like this, rough in one direction, smooth and aquadynamic in the other. And they aren't that rough, they're really small. They're similar in texture to sandpaper, but medium fine sandpaper, and your perception of sandpaper is based in air. Sharks are probably smoother in water. Ignoring that, let's focus on the tail. Now, I haven't really been drawing your attention there because most animals, it's very obvious where the tail is. It's at the end of the body. But in fish, it can be harder to tell where the body ends and the tail begins. So how do you determine it? The digestive tract is a very useful point of reference because literally 97% of all animals have a very similar digestive tract with one hole in the front and one in the back. Anything along that line is part of the body and anything branching off is an appendage. The tail is an appendage in all vertebrates that sticks out right behind the anus, which is the point of reference we need to locate. On the human side, this is easier. Walking upright and also being monkeys who develop the odd habit of sitting down has granted us these giant balls of muscle and fat called buttocks that
that surround the anus. Now, sharks, it's a bit trickier. It generally falls somewhere between the pelvic fins, which in this case are her legs, and the anal fin, which is presumably the one on her tail. That being the case, the tail is positioned correctly, if a little long, and the second dorsal fin is probably way bigger than it's supposed to be, especially if she's meant to be a good old GW. Except, wait a minute, that fin is paired. The anal fin of a shark isn't paired. That must mean it's her pelvic fins! Say hello to our second six-legged woman and our first double anist. That being the case, her tail is completely in the wrong spot. This entire chunk of her tail is technically still her spine, and that must be her first dorsal fin. That also means that the second dorsal fin and anal fin are just gone altogether. Three out of ten. Alright, so I couldn't find any lampreys or starfish, so we can skip straight to- Ah! Ha! Ah, ah! Say, Zinniop, is that an abdomen? Coming out of her abdomen? Well, yes. Like I was saying, the human digestive tract ends here, but the end of an insect's digestive tract is here. So welcome to the two anus club, and despite being an insect, she does not join the six-legged club. Alright then. Now, there is an argument to be made defending this. Here's a real mosquito, and you'll notice legs emerge only from the thorax. Humans have legs on the thorax and abdomen. You could argue that, given the choice, it's the accuracy of the legs being preserved by reshaping the body. If you really wanted to throw it in my face, you could say the thorax is analogous to the human torso and abdomen, but only homologous to the torso. Except I can't accept that, because this reshaping is predicated on the ideal that human legs can be mapped onto bug legs, and they can't. If we look at the most recent common ancestor between insects and humans, it had no legs. Humans and bugs developed them separately. You can't justify this part being the thorax because it has insect legs. You've drawn human legs on what would in this case be the torso. Also, there are no insect legs, so she essentially has zero legs. She doesn't have any hair, so we'll stay at the low score of 3 out of 10. Spiders have a similar problem, except it's worse for them because they have their head and thorax combined into a single cephalothorax. Now, she is drawn... Actually, I think that's meant to be a femboy. He is drawn with eight legs total, using a mixture of arthropod and human legs, which really means he only has four. Why? What's the purpose of the mixture? He doesn't have human hair, so that's nice, but he's missing a lot more than just that. Where are the chelicerae? Where are the pedipalps? Where are the spinnerets? Well, those at least could be tucked under the abdomen. Also, how does he get his pants on? Just from this perspective, it seems like the abdomen comes out a hole in the shorts, does it not? I mean, it makes sense for it to be attached to where the anus is in a human, considering his digestive tract should run through it. If so, how stretchy are those shorts to go all the way over them? And if not, is he walking around with his crack out? That's nasty! One out of ten. Make sure to like and subscribe.